What's up, I Like Scary? We are back. I hope you guys are having an awesome day. I'm having an awesome day. It feels great to be a horror fan. So you guys, today we're going to talk about some Halloween and speculation and theories. And you guys, this theory is something that I, I just put together a few days ago just thinking about it. Like, I don't even think no one has even brought this up. Now, this is, this is deep. Now, what I want to talk about, you guys, is Hawkins and Corey. Hawkins and Corey. Um, now, this it, it, this is deep. When you think about it, Hawkins, you know, he's the sheriff or whatever, right? Now, we did see, we did see that um, he has, like, this suit on. He's running up the stairs. He doesn't have on, like, you know, uh, the cop get up or anything. But it obviously looks like he's still connected to the force some way, shape, or form. Because you got cops around when he's running. Now, and we even get some... Behind the scene shot, he's talking to Lori, where he's talking to Lori, and you know, it's like they're talking about a situation or something. Now, let me tell you guys, huh? This right here is crazy. So, we know that Corey Cunningham has been accused of killing someone he's babysitted. And um, we, we don't know if he did it. We, we just don't know what is going on. So, what we do know is that Hawkins was once a sheriff. You know, he's, and, you know, he's in, you know, the forces, so he knows about a lot of stuff. So I was thinking this, what if, you guys, what if, when Corey, you know, is accused of killing someone he's babysitting, this situation happens, what if, you know, Hawkins is called to the scene? What if Hawkins is called to, you know, called to the scene and maybe he, you know, he sees Corey, maybe he sees Corey, maybe Corey's just standing there like shocked. Maybe Corey even has that look on his face like Michael was when he was younger, when he was six, when he killed Judith. Maybe he just has this look. And, you know, Hawkins already has, like, a little bit, a little bit of loneliness to him. So, what if, you know, he's, you know, Corey's just sitting right there talking to the cops, and, you know, he's probably like, I, I didn't do it. You know, it was an accident. And, you know, Hawkins is looking at him, and he's just, you know, and, and just figuring out stuff will happen with the situation. So, as time passes, and, he, you know, we're talking about Lori and Hawkins possibly, you know, uh, seeing each other or anything just you know even being friends you know they're talking about that and I came to think what if what if Hawkins actually is the one to tell Lori about Corey to kind of give her like a heads up like hey Lori um th this is that kid that was accused of killing someone he's babysitted um his story wasn't too you know his story didn't add up uh, he was kind of off when I was talking to him, you know, on the scene. I don't know, just, I know he's dating Allison. I can just see it. I can really see that, like, you know, I know he's dating Allison now. I just would keep an eye out for him and, you know, stuff like that. And and I have something else I want to talk about after this that's going to kind of pull a lot, of, a lot of this together. But, you know, Hawkins could be the one that tells Lori, you know, Corey's, uh, you know, you got to just keep an eye on him. I don't know what's going on. He still hasn't, we haven't have any evidence on him. But um, it's just... He is accused, you know, you know, we, we know what you dealt with with Michael and everything and now he's seeing Allison, your granddaughter, just, just be careful, Lori. And uh, maybe Lori even steps in like, you know, no, Corey's cool, you know, uh, Corey's cool, I, I didn't never know that. Or maybe Lori already, already knows it, but, you know, Hawkins is the one to actually, you know, talk to Corey on the scene. Maybe he's like, I don't know, his story wasn't adding up. Or something, just, you know, it can be something, maybe, I don't know what it is. Maybe the stuff I'm saying is, you know, it, it won't happen. But I just see Hawkins possibly, you know, doing something like that. Now, I was talking about this also. What if Hawkins actually sacrifices, you know, he actually sacrifices himself because of him just being upset about, you know, what happened to his partner? Now, it's just like, you know, he can't live with it. He's obviously saying, you know, the hot town of Hatterfield blood is on his hands. He's the reason. He should have shot him when he had a chance. He's trying to stop Lomas. All this stuff, right? So, he's obviously feeling somewhat guilty because he's still progressing with life knowing that he didn't get the consequence when, he, when you know, he, he uh, killed his partner. So, I can see him kind of sacrificing himself for Lori, like jumping in the way of a slice or something or, you know, tell her to leave and he dies or something. Or... Or maybe Corey kills Hawkins because Lori probably, you know, he sees Lori with Hawkins and he knows that this is, maybe even he tells Allison, like, this is the cop that was on the scene when you know, I was accused and, you know, he wasn't any help. You know, maybe he feels like Hawkins wasn't any help. It could be anything, but I just feel like somehow, some way, Hawkins is going to be connected small. 
like some small things are going to be connected between him and Corey, possibly, if you think about it, because he's, you know, he's in the police force and everything. But we do see him like a, you know, a white t-shirt and a blazer on. So maybe I'm just, you know, speculating right here. But I think that would really be crazy. Now, uh, something else I want to talk about. Now, this right here, you guys, is kind of like, you know, showing the tone of Corey and, you know, uh, the tone of the movie. So, if you guys don't want to know anything, you don't want to know anything about the movie, you want to just go in blind, uh, you should be leaving now because we're going to show some pictures that was just, you know, released, some new images of a certain scene that kind of confirms a theory that i fucking been talking about, you guys. If you've been following, you know, previous speculation and theory videos, you know I've been talking about this and I've been big on this. is like a golden theory on the channel. And um, we got some pictures to kind of confirm it, but it's not all the way confirmed, but it kind of shows you it can, it's a possibility. So you guys should not be here if you don't want to know the tone or anything, you know, about Corey or nothing. So, all right, with these pictures, now, we, we got today, these definitely kind of almost confirm some theories that I've been putting out there now. The first picture we get, you guys, is Lori with like a pocket knife, and it's like Corey looking down, and he has the glasses. Look, you guys, he has the glasses, right? And if you look at Corey's hand, it looks like it's like, you know, cut up or it's bleeding. Now, I don't know exactly what happens. This is just a picture of this scene. But this shows you that at a point, him and Lori were, you know, verbally talking to each other. And they weren't like beefing automatically. Like she spoke to him, obviously, before, you know, he became obsessed with Mike when they have this falling out. Now, I told you guys, I think in the beginning, Lori's going to be Team Corey. You know, yeah, Allison, I think you should date him. He looks cool. You know, I, I think Corey's cool. And maybe she feels for Corey, even after Hawkins told, you know, the theory I just told you guys before, maybe she's like, I can help him. He's accused. You know, he's innocent. Maybe Lori wants to help him just because, like, at least it's not Michael type of thing, you know, and look into it or something. We don't know. Maybe Michael's actually in that situation. Maybe he's the cause of the situation of Corey being accused. We don't know. But... It's like she's handing him a pocket knife now. The picture that I show you guys next is going to kind of, uh, you know, cement this theory and kind of cement this picture that I'll be showing right now what's going on. I'm about to tell you. I think that Lori's actually telling Corey how to protect himself. And, I, and you know, maybe I'm tripping out. Maybe this is something, you know, it can be something so small. Maybe cut itself on an accident. We don't know. But I, you know, to, to speculate and theorize and have some fun, I, what if you guys basically... He's being bullied, like I told you guys. I think Corey's being bullied, and this picture that I show you guys next shows you that he's being bullied. Um, he's being bullied by you know the town of Haddonfield and teens and everything. And maybe Lori's like, "Here you go, protect yourself. You got to protect yourself out here because you know, the, with the hype of Michael Myers, they're going to try to hurt you. You know, uh, we saw the mob, you know, and everything in Halloween Kills. They're going to definitely be on Corey's ass now. They're going to hate him, treat him like Michael." You guys know, but maybe Lori's going to feel for him because he dates her granddaughter and, you know, maybe she likes Corey in the beginning. But I can just see her kind of hand him like, huh, take this, protect yourself. And now, right here, obviously, his energy is Corey. Corey Cunningham, no obsession, nothing. And she's like probably like feeling for him, huh, take this, protect yourself. Now we get into this other picture where it's like they're on that fucking bridge where they kind of wrapped up the filming. And, um... Halloween ends around all you know all the cast and crew on the bridge. That's definitely the same one. Um, and we got a guy behind him. It looks like he has like a fucking a stick in his hand. And this guy with the varsity jacket is definitely the same guy that you see in a junkyard where you know he's like Cunningham. It's like a person under the fence. And um, you see in the NBC exclusive, he had he kind of has like a rifle and he kind of aims it at Corey. So it gets deep between them and i think to be honest this is one of the guys that corey's going to take out with the michael get up because he's bullying corey obviously because this is that same freaking you know this is that same sweater he has when he goes in the sewer. This looks like that same type of thing that's going on now it's kind of weird because when you looked at that scene where corey is by the sewers it looks like it's daytime out, so that's kind of weird but uh that kind of shows me something you know i told you guys maybe some of that uh that reshot footage is some stuff we see in a trailer. But as you see this, it's like at nighttime. And I'm trying to look. I mean, you can kind of see. I, I can't see the bruise, but you can see his face is dirty. Maybe they haven't, you know, put their hands on him yet. But they're definitely going to kick his ass, it looks like. And like I told you guys, 
I like scary. Haven't I been telling you guys, I think Corey's going to get chased into the sewers because it just all makes sense. And I think what's going to happen is basically he gets chased into the sewers by the bullies out of force. And Michael's that myth now that people are saying, like, yeah, you know, Michael, they're saying he lives in the sewers and he's not going to have any choice but to run and hide because they're kicking his ass. They probably would have damn near killed him type of thing. That's what I would guess. But uh, they chase him in there and this probably can, you know, play off um him just leading people down to the source for michael to take out and maybe you know when and when michael comes across you know some of the people that Corey brings down and that's fucking bullying him that he can't handle so he needs michael to handle him maybe one day he just stay he just takes the mask maybe he wants to do it himself and i can see this happening you know maybe his first kill Listen, you guys, maybe his first kill is something like this that could can, can, it kind of explain, it can kind of explain the obsession. Like that pocket knife that Lori gives him, if she gives it to him, you know, we're just talking speculation. Maybe he stabs one of the kids and he feels it like, oh, shit, like he stabs when he gets like this rush. So it kind of makes him like feel like might as well put the mask on and become Michael. I just stabbed someone out, you know, and I, you know, and I poked him up and shit and I, you know, and I killed him. I don't know. I'm just speculating at this point. But he's in his sewers. And I can see them coming behind him. But it's kind of weird because we do see this guy with the varsity jacket linked to, like, the junkyard and everything. And this is the same kid that's banging on the window that we saw in, you know, um, in past TV spots. We've seen in past TV spots. He's, like, banging on the window for help. Uh, maybe, you know... This is, you know, Michael coming out the source to kill him. Maybe Michael comes out the source to kill him. And, you know, he finds out that Corey is in cahoots with Michael. So he's trying to run and shit. And Michael takes him out. And, you know, him and Corey are actually, out, you know, obviously they're saying that they're colleagues and stuff like that. So, or Corey might just take him out, you know. Because we see this picture with Corey holding the mask off his head. And we see in the NBC special, he's like, I got you, freak. And he, like, he has the rifle and shit. So, I don't know. I know the junkyard is going to be something huge. My guess is going to be the end of scene. I told you guys in previous videos, I think Corey could possibly be connected, like, working like Arnie Cunningham, Dan and Christine. I think a lot is going to go on in this fucking junkyard. I don't know why, but this kind of confirms theories that I've been talking about, you guys, with that bullying. I just felt it because, you got to think, they don't want no one to be similar to Michael after what they just dealt with. He just killed a shit ton of citizens of Haddonfield, and he killed Karen, and he's just, like, raising hell in Haddonfield, and then you are getting accused of killing someone you babysitted. Come on, man. We're already dealing with Michael. We don't want you to be doing this shit. So I feel like this can possibly be the case. You know, he gets bullied. And um, that picture is very interesting with Lori having the pocket knife, though. I don't know. That would be crazy if Lori actually gives him a knife that starts at all. And it kind of backfire, backfires on her where he gets his first kill with this pocket knife. And, you know, it, it's like it's the first weapon he had and everything. And it kind of falls back on her. That's why he said when he's sitting um, on the floor, he says something like he says something along the lines like, you know, you started this. You started this. So it could be that. It could be like, you know, when she gave him that, it, it did start it. He became like, you know, obsessed with Michael once he, you know, protected himself with that pocket knife. And he's just like, you know what? That's that's the beginning. I stabbed someone with a pocket knife. Now I want to get the mask and the butcher knife and go out and do that. You know, it can be a lot of theories uh, along these pictures. Now, something else I just feel like, you know, with this being said, you see in the... Uh, previous picture I showed Lori and Corey are kind of like just sitting right there talking but it's like she's definitely going to see some energy change this shows us for sure they were cool at a point somehow some way but this shows you that energy is definitely going to change to the point where they're beefing I think they're going to definitely beef because I can just see it she's going to see something change maybe she sees Corey start to become like more demonic and obsessed with Michael maybe his energy goes from like just being a cool kid to just being Michael Myers you know you, you obviously his energy change you see him on the fucking stairs saying what you're going to do when Michael Myers come back but you know he's coming back, right? Like, she sees that. So I think that's where it's going to all go upside down. And they're going to kind of, you know, battle it out, obviously, because of that scene when he opens the door and she has the gun. And I think that's what's going to be emotional if she kills him by accident because she's going to probably feel like it's her fault. Uh, you know, this is just speculation, though, you guys. But comment down below what you guys think about everything we just talked about this video was just very deep i feel but um halloween ends is almost here it's almost here i have my tickets imax october 13th i'm coming for you then i'm going to actually see it again on friday i don't care i'm so ready for halloween ends but yeah you guys comment down below but unfortunately this is the end of the video don't forget to hit me on my social media i like on instagram i like scary say set on tiktok brand on facebook and i like scary on twitter and don't forget you guys to become a member of patreon and right there where it says subscribe next to a click join and become a member check out the official i like scary merch store and yeah you guys i love you all
Peace. Stay scary out there. Watch some horror movies.